Conference this morning, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, Galatians 5, 22, Galatians 5, 22, and, and you know, listen, if the Lord don't do anything other than to show you all that you keep on doing right no matter what goes on, then that's Amen. good enough for me. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And against such there is no law. May I say over these several last weeks that we've been going through this, I, I, I have noticed the devil attacking me in these areas more and more. Yeah. I have noticed the devil trying to provoke me to a place where that I would almost break what, what we're being taught and, and break what the Lord would have us to be and and, and, and really show in areas of our life that uh, supernatural things. If I was to sit down with you and I was to give an itemized breakdown the last several weeks of supernatural attacks that's yeah. happened, it would be amazing to you the fact that I'm even standing here today. Amen. But you know why? Because attacks are going to happen. But can I say God's still good? Amen. Amen. And God's still on the throne and God's still in control and, and that, that reminds me that's why the Bible says that if we walk in the spirit we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. In fact verse 24 the Bible says and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. In other words there ought not be no desires there ought not be nothing uh, uh, in us or around us that draws us away from the things of God. Everything in our life ought to push us to the cross. Everything that we do ought to push us to the cross. And when life does happen, that does not mean we got to quit. We ain't got to lay down. Amen. We can look up and find where our help comes from. Amen. I thank God my help comes from the Lord. Amen. My help does not come from the United States government. Right. My help it does not even come from my family. I love my family and they are a help to me. But my true abundant help comes from he who controls everything. And I thank God that your Bible says he works all things to the good that love him that are called according to his purpose. And I thank God this morning that we have Christ. And I thank God that Christ has me this morning. Amen. 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 So if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In other words, that all these that we have studied out, they should be a demonstration in our life day in and day out. In fact, yesterday, I, I you know, my wife says I'm too transparent. I'd rather lay it out there. If you're going to talk about me, if I give it to you, it'd be true. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that way you, you ain't got to wonder about me. You know exactly where I stand on everything and, and how I stand on it. Amen? I, I Listen, I, there, there's days I can be sweet as sugar, and there's other days I can be mean as a pit bull. Amen? Amen. 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 But we got to find a good balance and all that. You can be angry, but you're to sin not. Amen. Amen. Uh, you're to keep control of yourself. That's what temperance is. It's about having control over your desires, over your appetites. Uh, uh, the, the, the flesh likes to be the flesh. The flesh likes to lose control. But your Bible says that if we're going to live in the Spirit, we have to walk in the Spirit. Why? Because you and I cannot make it a day without the Spirit of God leading, guiding, directing, and moving us into a place where he can use us. And can I tell you where God will move you a lot of times uh, is to the lowest point of humility because when you get humbled down, uh, that's where God can use you the most. Amen. 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 Bible says, and let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And so in so much that when I live this Christian life, I should be able to do so. Uh, that we are still on temperance. But can I tell you, this not only applies to temperance, but this you ought to be able to live this Christian life and tell other people to live this Christian life and not be a hypocrite in doing Amen. so. Take your Bibles over to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. God knows we do it. I believe we're still going to finish this tonight, today. If not, I can go over a little bit because I can't start at 11 o'clock without us. Amen. Now verse 26 is going to be in my 11 o'clock preaching. Might as well read it. Now I'll start over in verse 25. <coughs> 
You all keep taking your time. on being verse 24. I am. Start verse 24. Well, I want you to see this. Amen. Amen. We're not to be hypocrites. We're to live our life according to, uh, as to the word of God. But the Bible says, And know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. Now, I like this because I, I really believe that Brother Paul must have been very heavy in sports. Because I'm preaching this morning, are you a contender? He always talks about fighting the good fight of faith, wrestling not against principalities there. He talks about running the race. Amen. Amen. I, I really do believe that the man was uh, was actively in sports because I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of when Paul says this, I relate to what he's talking about. I relate to what, what he's trying to get the point across. And But I thank God I've been in races Man, that I've won here in the, in the natural realm. Uh, I, I mean, we took off. I was always the short distance runner. I didn't want to do the three and a half mile. I want to do like 40 yard dashes. That's where I could show off. Amen. I was bold. You would look at me now, but at one time I was bolt lightning. And, and, and man, I mean, 40 yard dash, that was my thing. But, but then when it got past that and went on to the mile, man, it was them skinny kids that didn't run fast but had great lungs. Amen. And they would show. But no matter what race you're in, the, the there's only, I know today we got second and, you know, we give participation trophy. But growing up, man, it, the only person that won was the guy or lady that crossed the track first. And when she walked in, man, they, I never will forget, man. I mean, I finished second one time and, you know, they give you, back then they used to give you that little sorry medal that second on it. You know, they bought down some generic trophy case and, and then, you know, then they have the first place trophy. Would look like she won there. He won the Super Bowl. Yeah, amen. Right, yeah, amen. Yeah. I mean, they'd have to, three of us would have to pack it to them. I mean, and then they hand you that little thing that says, says second on it. In other words, they don't even want you to remember you lost a stinking yeah. thing, but they also, because for picture reasons, they got to put you on a podium. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But but only one, really one person got a prize. Amen. Only one got a prize out of that race. But that's not the race we're running that's for God. Amazing. And you know what's so amazing to me is in this race that we're running for God, we shall all obtain the great prize if we walk and run right, right. if we do right. what's right, Amen. if we control ourselves. And, and, and there's many crowns. And so here soon I need to preach on the crowns of glory. And But the fact is these crowns are real prizes that not just one of us can obtain. But all of us, in fact, if you all you got to be looking for is a great appearing of, of Christ and you receive a crown. Amen. 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 And our race is different than the, than the world's race. It, it ain't about one of us. Listen, I wanted to say on the winning side because I got to thinking if we are on Christ's side, no matter Amen. how we finish the race, Amen. hey, I, we're still going to heaven and we're still on the winning side and we're going to obtain, if nothing else, eternal life into heaven one day. Amen. If nothing else, they come in and say, oh, he, he couldn't adapt to 2024. In other words, let me just put that in layman's terms. He wasn't compromised. Amen. Amen. I'm not putting up with shacked up people no matter who Amen. it is. Amen. 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 I'm not putting up, I'm not putting up with sin. We're not welcoming it in. Amen. I don't care. Listen to me. Sin is not right. And these other churches, they have a show of flesh, That's but right. they do not have the power of God. Amen. I'd rather have the power of God than any show of flesh. Amen. 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 That's right. But look down there in verse 25. i got to move on quickly. And every man that's striving for the mastery is temperate. Oh, man. In all things. Now, they that do obtain a corrupt crown, but we an incorruptible. But here's the thing. is He's just temperate in all things. That's like bringing your body into subjection. Amen. We're going to say in verse 27, huh? But look at verse 26. It says, I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight the not I as one that beat the air. I love this idea. Who, who has ever boxed before? I mean, really, don't, don't raise your hand. If you ain't boxed, you're going to bear something. I'm not even. Okay, so, but Brother Kelly, when, when you box, you have what's called a lead foot. Okay, you've got most people lead out with a jab. Very rarely there is some that control hooks. But but listen, when, when, you're, when you're air boxing, you can hurt yourself more air boxing yeah. Then you can't actually make physical contact. I, I've known guys throw their elbow out. Yeah. 
yeah. by air boxing. Just, just moving around, throwing in and, and beating here. And, 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 and you kind of help, you, you pick on because they got, I mean, they, they got it all looking good. I mean, I mean they got the bobble going on. They got the, and then they, they ah! Yeah. Yeah. I've seen dislocated shoulders too. Mm-hmm. Ah! And then you're going to say, what did you do? Well, what did, how did you hurt yourself? See, life's tough, friend. Are you listening to me? And you're going to get hurt in life anyway. Amen. I've seen people fall downstairs and break tailbones. I've I, I seen kids try to grab this tree limb at the top of trees and fall, amen, and break their arms. I've seen Chloe fell off a tree one time climbing. Well, she was told not to climb a tree. She broke her arm. And, and life's just full of pain. But you know what? Listen to me. But if somebody comes up and says, hey, how did you get hurt? Well, I was fighting a good fight, and I was in there doing something for the Lord. And, and when I was doing that, somebody hurt me. And, man, that actually shows you got hurt by something, amen. Amen. But this guy that beateth the air, <coughs> why Paul said, I'm not one of me. You know, how embarrassing to come up and say, Brother Billy, what did you do to your left jar? And you said, Well, I, I, was, I was in my house punching the air. <laughs> Amen. Are y'all getting the point of this? Amen. You hurt yourself doing nothing? Oh, I didn't say I wasn't doing nothing. I was punching the air. <laughs> oh, well, well, now, huh? but, but you really weren't accomplishing nothing. Right, amen. Get your shoulders out, your elbows out. You, you know, you look like you got beat up by a grill on your left arm, but, but you're in there doing. So explain to me what you're doing. Oh, I was just swinging to nothing. <laughs> and we laugh, but that's most of what our Christian lives are led amen. like. We get hurt along the way. What was you doing? Nothing. I wasn't really wasn't doing anything for God. Amen. I wasn't really doing anything for the Lord. And you know what that makes it look like? It makes it look like you're just a casualty because of laziness. And can I tell you, that's a lot of what goes on. Amen. 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 But if a guy was properly training on the bags, if a guy if a guy was properly in the ring doing what he's supposed to be doing and sparring and learning self-control of his body, he wouldn't throw his elbow. Like, you know why? Because you find when you're actually doing air boxing, you're supposed to limit your range of movement. He would train himself how to do right at all times. Even when he wasn't doing nothing, he would at least be doing it right. And that's the problem today. We're not in the fight. We're not fighting right. We're not doing right. And therefore, along the way, we find ourselves getting wounded absolutely over nothing. Amen. Losing our temper over nothing. Amen. If you ask me, brother, aren't you going to lose your temper? Yes, yes, I did. My boys quit church. I've been betrayed more in the last seven months I've ever betrayed in my life. People are going the way of, of Baal. They're quitting on God. They're quitting on the King James Bible. They don't want their wives to get right. They don't want their children to get right. They want one to live. You better believe I'm, I'm mad for a reason. I'm not mad for a purpose. Why? Because I hate the devil. And I want to see him get right with God. Amen. But some of you, you lose it over something. It matters for nothing for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why if I'm going to hit, I want to punch more than just the air. I want my impact to be felt. I want them to understand why. Because look at verse 27. Because I kept my body, I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection. Why? Because in all these things that I'm preaching to you, it's hard, Miss Jenny, if you're going to tell people to be a Christian and you ain't a Christian. Amen. Amen. Where are you? Where are your feelings right here? Amen. You need to be temperate. You need to be meek and forgiving and loving one another. And you need to push on. No matter what what storms may come, no matter what wind may howl, well, you need to stay in the fight. Amen. When I've been something, y'all come into church this morning and walked in and we weren't here. Amen. I had some fill in preacher. Brother Hargis resigned here. He's no longer here. He quit the fight. And y'all said, well, he said just two weeks ago. Yeah, amen. That's right. Oh, don't get me wrong. I filled my resignation sheet out last night. But I'm so full of God that God told me, said, you ain't going to miss. I'll kill you. You miss that church. (laughs) You lay out on them tomorrow, I'd blow your house up. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we can't just say it and not live it. 
And you think that do you think that, that there was a part of me? Uh -huh. Amen. And you know why I walked back to that back room when I first because I noticed he wasn't gonna be here. It became a heaviness on me and a burden on me. That's a life, friend. But I'd rather be caught doing right and living life Amen. for the Lord Jesus Christ than be doing nothing Amen. and going through the same things. Amen. Amen. I'd rather be producing these fruits. Why? Because I, I, I need to not be a hypocrite. I need not be a castaway. Bible says, but I kept under my body and bring it to subjection. Lest by any other means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. My family's proving their salt right now. Amen. My wife's having a hard time. She's out there broke down. That's her kid. But my girls are in there teaching Sunday school. That's right. My girls are going to be singing specials here in just a little bit. Amen. You you look to Cat Cat and Claire and Charlotte and look at the grins on their faces and the and the joy in their heart. Amen. Amen. Friend, listen Amen. to me. You're going to have a moment where you're going to have to prove your salt too. I've seen some of you. I mean, just a little bit of resistance and pain. You crumble. Hey, you can't prove your salt. Amen. And then you become of yourself a castaway. Hey, saying one thing to one person Amen. and live in another. Amen. Amen. But in this, we're to keep ourselves under control. We're to keep ourselves in the thankfulness. We're to keep ourselves wrapped into these fruits of the Spirit. Why? Because when you find yourself not living in the, the Spirit, just brother, you mark it down, you're going to find yourself living in the flesh. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Anger, bitterness, Amen. wrath. Amen. And all of us know James 1.20, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You will find yourself uh, not only not doing right, but you'll find yourself, and listen to me, friend, you'll find yourself on the wrong side of God. And all That's, right. That's right. That's right. Somebody pulled in your park a spot in Kroger. Somebody didn't give you the right of a mound of this or, 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 or for whatever thing you come Amen. up with. You have killed your testimony. That's right. Don't tell them you go to London Baptist Church. I, I had somebody one time I was out in public with them and, and they started to, to, to lose their temperance and they pulled out a Bible track and I told them and, and they'll tell you I told them I said put that back up now he looked at me and his eyes about that big around he said excuse me I said put that up I said don't you dare embarrass our church Amen. by handing that to anybody Amen don't you dare embarrass us by you the way you acted. And he looked at me and said, you act like you're ashamed of me. I said, I've been ashamed of you the entire time we've been here and how you've carried wow. yourself and how you've acted and how you've talked. Amen. And how you... I said, you better believe I'm ashamed of you right now. Amen. Why? He'd have done more damage that day, Brother Frank, right. than he could have undone in a lifetime of missionary work. Amen. Amen. Why? Because what we do matters. Amen. Because if you ain't going to keep yourself under full subjection, if you're not going to live the Christian life, and no, it's not easy. We have bad days. Listen, me, can I tell you something? Don't beat yourself up too much on bad days. But can I tell you, but if it's your everyday thing, Amen. start to realize there's something wrong. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's a display of tr Christian growth. Go to 2 Peter 1. <clears throat> And by the way, I didn't wear a jacket today to be rebellious. My jacket got laid down on the floor. And I got eight kids. You just use your imagination. <laughs> two coats. Which I took two coats to North Carolina. They thought it was a good idea to lay my coats. Don't worry, they're folded nice and neat on the floor. <laughs> I walked in there, looked at my hanger, my hanger was as soon as my hanger was empty, I said, oh no. <laughs> I said, does anybody know where my coats are? And there, and there was one, and, and they sleep in this little taller bed. And, and I looked down there, and there was two blankets that didn't look like blankets. <laughs> so them's folded up. Why is them in there? Oh, 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 them yours. Them's yours. I said, oh man, I bet they ain't gonna be worn this morning. Amen. Are y'all in Second Peter chapter Amen. one? Amen. We're gonna read eight verses, then we're gonna be done. Y'all ready? Amen. Yes, sir. Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained like precious. Man, is your faith precious this morning? Amen. Amen. I don't mind his. 
with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby, I like this, yep. are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add your faith virtue. Now watch this now. This is a building of you. Once you get into faith, that's one thing. But then there's some things to be built on. Right. I'm going to be preaching a message here soon. What you building on? Right, amen. What you building on? I'm we're, we're all the construction engineers in the Christian realm when I get on that message. Amen. But it says, and add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge and knowledge temperance. Yep. And the temperance patience and the patience godliness in an amazing without temperance there can be no patience there can be no godliness Well, and, and I was talking to somebody the other day they said Brother Hargis I think you're wrong on temperance I believe it's all to do with the temper and I said no it's about to do with bodily control Amen. because their patience comes out of that and then godliness and godliness brotherly kindness and brotherly kindness charity and if these things be in you and abound that you make you all shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, when we live these things, we live to find about more about Him. That's right. Have you ever wondered why you don't know much about Him? Why you see, what, 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 what used to shock me was when people shouted. That made no sense to me. I remember when I walked into Dixie Park Baptist Church for the first time in Bridge, Kentucky. That's when I was 18 years old. And you know, that's before they got greedy and weird. But anyway, but old Dixie, I remember walking in there and the first time I ever heard them start shouting and hollering, man, I, I jumped up, man. I thought, I, I thought we we're going to fight my way out. They're, they're attacking me right now. It's a war. We're going to broke that war in the pews. What a world. I come from a Southern Baptist church. The only shouter we had was a grandma that pushed them in from the nursing home. <laughs> she was it. You pushed her in a wheelchair, they put her on the front row, just so somebody would amen the poor preacher in the Southern Baptist Church. Dead as a hand. I remember one time they were doing a, a musical singing day, and a guy got up and sung Elvis. Wow. <clears throat> sure. I mean, he did a hoo hoo. <laughs> you know, he had all the moves. I remember that preacher was over just shaking his head. And man, there was there was about the, I mean, dead is dead dead church. Everybody all right? Dead church. Amen. Then I got into a church like that, man. They got to shouting, <laughs> hollering. Amen. I thought, what was wrong with these people? <laughs> and man, the first time I heard holy about holy living, brother Frank, holy living. Amen. Holy living. So pre- See, like it's all he knew how to say, holy, 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 holy. I thought, man, that's like a Christmas song. Amen. Holy, 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 holy. But, but this is what he, I remember when Mark, we, we've been friends for a long time. It's, it's hard to believe you know, going on a quarter of a century, man. But friend, he, he walked down to me. He used to be a real preacher. He walked down and he said, hey, sir, are you holy? And I remember just, <coughs> just immediately shooting off him. Sure. He said, then what's in your life to prove that? Remember, man, I got to examine my life and what I was doing. I got right on some things. And I remember the first time in my entire life, Whenever I had enough liberty to shout in church. Amen. Because you know what I found out? I found out more about him and what he wanted. I got more things out of my life. And when the preacher was preaching on them things, he wasn't, for the first time, he wasn't preaching to me about it. Amen. Amen, Amen to that. I, I, had some, I had some situation that called me. I joined the army, which, well, Will calls you to backslide. Yes, it will. And, uh, I remember I back sitting on the Lord and was in with Switch Mac Duty Reserves, was in the reserves for a little bit. And I never will forget whenever I got right with the Lord. Man, I sat through that whole service, right where you are at right now, Brother Josh, and had no amens. All I had was old me's. Everything he preached about literally was me. But man, I remember when I got up to that altar and I got right with the Lord and I got back and stepped with the Lord and I said, God, if you'll cab me again. 
Amen. I said, I'll never walk away from you again if you Amen. I mean, that, that's, a lot, that's a hard promise to make. I made that promise a long time ago, and I've kept it so far, Brother Frank. I've been true to my word. Amen. Only by the help of God, though, will it. That's right. Amen. But I remember after I got right in the very next service, they got to preaching. Man, I had a sense of nervousness come over me. But because of the knowledge that I had grabbed on him again. Amen. Man, I got to shouting in that pew. Amen. I lost control. Amen. Woo! Probably wasn't even the right time. I just wanted to. God just, I was so excited. I was shouting over the offering. Amen. I cried and wailed for 10 minutes over the, the hymns being called out. Amen. In fact, the music master, he loved it. He'd say, page 57. I'd shout. And he'd go, 57. I'd shout again. He'd say, 57, about 36 times. Just get me to shout. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what has stolen a lot of our joy and our peace and our happiness and stuff is by our lack of knowledge. For a lack of knowledge, the people perish. That's what the Bible says. And you and I need to take these teachings that we've had in this and you grab hold of them. We need to have these fruits in our life. We've been given all the authority, all the power that has been needed to give to live this life. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank you, God, for Sunday school. I thank you, God, for your mercy, Lord. We just ask you to bless the 11 o'clock hour. God, Lord, let us take these things, Lord. And God, Lord, I know it was kind of short because of the, the address in the church. But God, help us now, Lord, to move forward for your cause and your truths. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.